interesting stuff we're going to get into. Um, signs, you know, a lot of people talk about a sign and signs and wonders and the various things that uh, people talk about. Sometimes they don't really know exactly what they're saying. I want you to look, at you, if you will, at Matthew 12, 38 through 40. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was, in, was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the earth, in the heart of the earth. Well, you know, a lot of people really refer to this scripture and uses it a basis and a foundation that we don't need any signs and wonders anymore. There's a whole slew of denominations that believe that because now we have the written word, we don't need to see any more signs and wonders. That's, that's all past. That, that passed with the death of the last apostle. Well, I don't believe that for one reason is I see too much of it. And, you know, if you're seeing signs and wonders, that totally uh, wipes out that whole theology. We see signs and wonders. I mean, you see them in the news from time to time. There's reports of things happening that are supernatural. And as times become harder and people are in need of the Lord to move into the life in a greater way, we see more of those signs and wonders. The sign of the death and resurrection is a very strong sign, but only the people who were there were able to see that. Just as we've read and studied before previously, that many people bore witness to Jesus' resurrection. It says in the, one of the latter, the latter part of Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 28, that when Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross, when he died, that the temple, the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, that every rock cracked, there was an earthquake, and that many came out of their graves, going into the cities, bearing witness of the resurrection. Mark 4 and 24. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. <laughs> What's all this taking and giving and all this stuff? What does this mean? The thing with a, a prophet is that you can only do that what God tells you to do. You don't have that same equality with the apostolic faith to just say, Lord, I, I need this. Will you help me get it? And he goes on his way, and God makes it happen. Because a prophet's led in a totally different way. He can only say what he hears. He can only do what he sees. Anything outside of that is just the man. Nothing's going to change. And that always baffled me. How come some of these verses of Scripture seem to contradict themselves? One time you're saying all you got to do is pray, ask, and believe, and you get it. And others say you got to hear it to get it. What's the difference? And the difference is the function of that gifting and that calling. 